As part of our Arabia 2.0 series, we're looking at the countries of the Gulf Cooperation Council. They're hoping to take their own place among the world's emerging markets in the near future. Let's go to London and check in with Florence Ede, the CEO of the market research company Arabia Monitor. She has just completed a report on the next decade for the GCC economies, the six countries of the Gulf and their influence over the North African countries as well. Florence, it's nice to have you on the Global Exchange. Let me jump right in here. And I picked out one aspect of your report suggesting that Egypt and Tunisia are in a better position than the Eastern European countries after the fall of communism. Is that because they have the Gulf countries to feed in some of the oil wealth to stabilize these countries? Eventually, we hope they will benefit from what's going to be uh, an important um, component of growth in the future in the MENA XGCC, uh, meaning that intra-regional financial flows are going to have to grow in order to meet the funding gaps in uh, the countries that are oil importers. Uh, however, they also already benefit from the fact that compared with, for example, the countries uh, of Eastern Europe after the fall of the Berlin Wall, in, in Egypt and Tunisia, we have a fairly vibrant private sector. And we have uh, a long history of private enterprise and uh, regionally integrated uh, businesses that invest to all the way across Africa, for example, from Tunisia and from Egypt. So it's both. It's future flows and current capacities in the private sector. Let me see if I can put you on the spot a little bit here. Your report is suggesting that uh, in another 10 years after the reforms of the last 10 years, we could see the GCC countries and some of the satellite countries here in the broader Middle East catch up with some of the emerging markets of Asia. Some would think that is almost crazy. What leads you to uh, put that into your report? Well, what we've done, this is a, a research project that, that's been underway for a few months now, and that is a running theme in our uh, work on the region uh, this year. Uh, we've decided to look beyond the short-term noise and to say, okay, if we uh, fast forward a little bit by a few years and, and look through to the end of the decade, what are we likely to see? And if we compared the GCC countries to the Asian uh, uh, economies, the newly industrializing Asian economies, sometimes called the tigers at the time, 20 years ago, when those economies were emerging, what do we find? And so we conduct this analysis, and then we also project forward uh, from it. And we find some really very interesting results. We find, certainly in terms of savings, current account surpluses, etc., much more favorable uh, numbers uh, in, in, in the GCC. Uh, we also find that um, uh, investment levels in Asia were higher and are likely to continue to be higher. Uh, and as a result of that, uh, GDP growth uh, was higher, although more volatile in Asia, and could continue to be higher. Uh, than what we have in the GCC. So that tells us a lot going forward in terms of the quality of investment and the sorts of things that need to be invested in uh, R&D, uh, the software of education, not just university buildings, but what do we teach at those universities, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, there's an obvious question to ask, and that is there's a glass ceiling uh, in this part of the world because of the monarchies that rule. Uh, so the entrepreneurial culture, can it really take off? They have a trading culture. They even are starting to trade amongst themselves and invest in countries like China and India. But can they really break out an entrepreneurial culture when you have the monarchies of the region willing to spend money, but are they willing to share power? Yeah, I think some of the monarchs of the region are, are very uh, important entrepreneurs um, themselves. I think, you know, what uh, Qatar has done regionally, economically, politically, and in terms of financial markets has been quite entrepreneurial over the past couple of years. That's w one example. Likewise, in the Emirates, we've seen some major examples of entrepreneurial government. Uh, uh, and, you know, uh, some say uh, excessively entrepreneurial in places like Dubai. So I, I think there's no lack of entrepreneurship in our part of the world. And I don't think there's an inherent contradiction between having uh, monarchies and, and royal families uh, governing and having a vibrant and entrepreneurial uh, private and or public uh, sector. I think what is certain is that in the Gulf going forward, we're going to see revisions of social contracts. I think people are looking for new relationships between ruled and ruler and more equitable and more transparent distribution of sovereign wealth. Uh, 